So hey guys, uh, my name is Alonzo and my talk is uh, about uh, some of the opportunities that I see um, with Gutenberg and WordPress uh, 5.0. Um, and uh, so I wanted to uh, just let you know, I know there's some people that kind of get anxious asking questions sort of in person. Um, Feel free, if uh, you have a question during the presentation, to uh, uh, text that number. And um, at the end, I'll try and uh, uh, answer all the questions I get through text. Um, just a little bit about me. Uh, I'm CEO of uh, 11 Online. We're an agency in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, do a lot of WordPress work, but do a lot of other stuff, too. Um, we uh, started Block Party uh, this year, um, wpblock.party, you should go check it out. Um, been working with WordPress since 2015, it's not that long. And um, uh, WordPress is still actually an important part of our business, even though we do lots and lots of things these days. And in New Mexico, when you're a um, software development shop and you want to scale, um, you've got to do lots of different things. It's it's a 48th poorest state in the union, I think. So, um, you know, you got to do lots of things to, to get by. Um, for those of you that don't know, but I assume you know at this stage because it was the 19th, I think, it's going to become part of uh, uh, your clients' realities and your realities. Um, what's Gutenberg? It's the new WordPress editor as of November 19th, uh, 5.0. Although I've, I've learned to uh, be somewhat skeptical of dates. Um, it's the first sort of iteration of Block Party we built in April, which I think was the first kind of goal date. Um, would have been really nice if it would have come out then. Uh, but uh, yeah, so it's a, you know, uh, what you see is what you get uh, experience on the admin side. The, the paradigm is blocks, which is very different. Um, Gutenberg comes with simple blocks. Um, you, but you can use custom blocks or build custom blocks, use third-party blocks. Um, and of course, there's a lot of implementation controversy. Do, do, does, how many just raise your hands if you know a little bit about that? Oh, OK, wow. That's interesting. Uh, I've done this talk a number of times, or variations of it a number of times at other WordCamps this year. And almost always, no one raises their hand. <laughs> this is interesting. Um, in any case, uh, so first thing we're going to do is uh, do a little demo for you uh, uh, Boston guys. Um, this is typically what happens to me when I do demos. Um, sorry, Red Sox fans. Um, we're feeling okay. Don't worry about it. Yeah. That was four World Series ago. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm a Met fan, as you're about to find out. So uh, maybe that's sort of doubly. But yeah, yeah, you guys, you guys are doing fine. Um, so, yeah, okay, there we go. Um, sorry, I know this wasn't going to be mirrored. Okay, so uh, I just put together a pretty simple demo post. And in fact, when you install Gutenberg as a plugin, um, there's a drop-down feature you'll see. I think it's right here, down here, and it says demo. And you can access like a demo post, and it shows off, uh, you know, the default blocks. And uh, I just, uh, yeah, and and I think most people's understanding of what Gutenberg is, what the new editor is, is is more that, and the simple sort of blocks that come with Gutenberg, right? Um, you know, this is like a cover block. There's a there's a YouTube block. You know, there's there's all this kind of stuff you might expect that would come along. Um, but what I wanted to show you is a little bit more of some of the blocks that we've been building over the last year and maybe, you know, what's, what's possible. Because I think um, probably most people haven't really seen what's, what's possible with, with custom blocks and third-party blocks. So, um, so there's, uh, yeah, so there's this, which is um, uh, we, we built, you know, one of the things we were thinking about is, okay, well, how can we use some of the, you know, possibilities of Gutenberg um, to you know, build you know, just just trying it out, testing it out to build like sort of common web UI, right? Um, so 
you know, you've seen this on a million websites, the pricing table, right? So this is a, this is actually a Gutenberg block. Um, uh, you know, you can do a lot with it. Again, it's what you see is what you get. You can add details, add buttons, um, add links. And then there's, you know, block settings over here, again, like per month, per year, what kind of currency. Um, there's a little bit of styling stuff. We, you know, again, we, we built some of these blocks just to see how it worked and test things out. Um, I don't necessarily think you want to give, if you're an agency, you don't want to give your clients so many options, but it's possible in Gutenberg. Um, and uh, especially styling options. Um, clients are oftentimes not designers, and uh, they'll make really ugly stuff if you let them. But, uh, but anyway, um, so, so you know, this is kind of what it looks like. Um, you know, pricing table, what it looks like on the back end. And uh, if you see what it looks like here on the front end, um, you know, it's, it's almost identical. Um, and it's truly, you're editing in the block, and it's truly what you see is what you get. Um, so, OK, so that, you know, again, these are kind of, that, that, that's more of a presentation block. Um, so what I wanted to do was uh, I wanted to show you guys, like, so this is like my sample baseball nerd post. I'm a baseball guy, a sports guy in general. And, um, you know, I really, uh, um, I'm a big Met fan. I came to the States in 85, saw the Mets win the World Series in 86, and then been disappointed for the next 32 years. Um, but uh, so anyway, so you know, one of the one of the things, one of the sort of use cases we were thinking of is, uh, you know, I, I read a lot of sports blogs, um, and um, you know, one of the things I, I noticed in a lot of these sports blogs is that the data visualizations were really poor, simple, sort of screenshotted or um, not very dynamic. And so I thought, well, wouldn't it be cool to build a block that would let you know people create dynamic uh, data visualizations? Right, um, and uh, so you know, we we we've made a bunch of these blocks with uh, Google Data Charts, right? And so let me just show you what it kind of looks like on the, uh, you know, in in the in the editor, right? So you you click on the block, and then you have this, um, you know, you can set the title. You, you we actually set it up to where you can pull data from Google Sheets, which is pretty cool. Uh, so you can have a Google Sheet, and then, then just. Uh, but the, this is just, if you, if you wanted to set up a, a pie chart right there in the block, you have uh, names, values, you can set colors, uh, controls, you can slice, you can, uh, you know, explode a slice, right, and so forth. And then this is my pie chart of how you become a Met fan, right? Um, uh, you know, 32% masochist. I don't know if that's accurate. That's just, uh, you know. Um, uh, this is one of my favorites is, uh, you hate your dad who loved the Yankees. So it's uh, some sort of rebellion or something, right? Um, and oddly attracted to Mr. Met. So anyway, you can like kind of, uh, you know, like you can kind of set settings here, uh, set, you know, set them 3D. Again, this is using Google's charts API. Um, so it's not actually the most sophisticated thing. Someday we want to rebuild them using something like D3 or, um, and, and give people a little bit more options. But uh, again, this was just sort of, you're like thinking, okay, well, what's what's possible? What can we do um, within here? And then you know, like what you get on this side is you get a, you know, you get a really dynamic, um, cool-looking data visualization. Um, and again, it's in in the post, and it you get a great, you know, because of what Gutenberg can do, you get a preview on the uh, admin side that actually matches what it looks like. I mean, have you guys ever done data visualizations in in WordPress in the content? Um, the options you have are pretty limited. They're short code based, or um, and certainly you, you're not getting previews and things like that. So um, again, uh, this is uh, this is a, uh, a line chart block that we uh, made, um, charting Mets losses. As a Met fan, you you focus on that, right? Um, you know, someone was telling me uh, someone was telling me that um, I'm a I'm a sports Catholic. Right? There's a lot of guilt, sadness. Uh, but, but anyway, um, so, so yeah, so again, on the, you know, on the admin side, right, um, 
names, values, controls. You can title the axes, the axes. You get a preview. You have lots and lots of settings here. You can you know, curve. You know, you do area. Again, and and so, so, you know, all this stuff is using Google Charts. Um, and and yeah, like I said, that's what it looks like. Um, so and and you know, again, we we were playing around, just thinking about like, okay, what's a different web UI, right? You know, different web UI that we uh, we could play around with. Sliders, carousels, whatever you want to call them. It's not our favorite stuff. Clients love them, um, but you know. I'm sort of dubious um, as to the effectiveness of these, maybe cer certain use cases. But you know, uh, have you guys ever built a carousel or slider uh, using a plugin in WordPress? Uh, what I mean, typically, what's what's the experience like? I mean, what what kinds of stuff do you guys use? I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. Anyone? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Revolution slider, right? Um, yeah, do a do a do a, yeah do a well. So my experience with that uh, plugin is that there are a million settings, right? Um, and also, uh, you know, I don't know. Do a search on Panama Papers and revolution sliders. It'll be interesting. Anyway, um, but yeah, so my experience of uh, using uh, sliders and building sliders for clients uh, is just that the, the the experience of putting together a slider, adding images to a slider, tweaking settings is uh, complex um, and difficult and not user friendly. Um, and so what we tried to do is we tried to build as, as like simple as possible um, a, a, a slider block where you could just you know, very simply add images, trash images, change settings, like in the, right, in the block itself, right, um, and and you know give give some give some user options, right, indicators, non indicators, etc. Again, this is just sort of, sort of a kind of like proof of concept. Um, you know, as you can see, um, I of course focus on all the greats that were screwing up or messed up, right. Um, <laughs> You know, we traded Nolan Ryan, beautiful. Uh, but anyway, uh, so and then again, here's another one. It's just uh, it's just a, a pop up, a modal, that's a block, right? Just common, you know, common web UI. So this is what it looks like. Um, you know, on this side, you can title, you can title it. You can put in other blocks as content. Uh, this is kind of cool. You can change like animations, and it gives you a little preview, right? Um, Anyway, uh, let's see what else. Oh yeah, this is a, the statistic. You've probably seen that one, right? Like <coughs> number of co cups of coffee. You know, I don't know. I don't. I don't, I don't know what people use this stuff for. I, I don't know. But um, again, uh, so on this side, actually, I think we did. We did on this side. We did. Yeah. So we you, you can do. We have a like a. We have a count up animation that you can set like when you slide down when you you know uh, scroll down. Um, this is uh, this is like under this is like super super under development. It's just a um, it's a scatter chart again. So the reason I show you this is yes to brag, but also um, also to kind of give you the understanding of of what's possible. And I think, frankly, from a communication standpoint, I don't think that that's been really communicated and um, uh, you, you know what what the possibilities are for you know, users to actually be able to create rich content on their own in the editor. Um, and, um, uh, you know, the, the kind of the possibilities are, are, are endless, you know, and even, even right now there's lots and lots of stuff you can do um, and, and, you know, the product's still kind of in, in development and not even part of core yet. Okay. Um, I think that's, I think that's it. So, well, if I can get to my screen here. Oh, here we go. Um, there we go. So yeah, no, okay, no baseball through the legs. Um, some of the benefits for content creators, as I see them, you know, what you see is what you get, for real. 
finally in the editor? I mean, you know, Tiny MC people, or they, they often say it's what you see is what you get, but any of us that's actually ever used Tiny MC and, and WordPress knows that that's oftentimes not the case. Um, you know, like it's, you can make custom blocks to, you know, create content that would, rich content that would be either be very difficult or impossible or the user experience would be very kind of um, junky. Uh, you know, potentially down the line, and, and that's why I include a link here to the roadmap, potentially down the line, I think, it, you know, as, as, as the product sort of matures, as this feature matures, um, it, it, it could either replace page builders or, or just serve as a sort of built-in page builder. Um, which I think is kind of cool, um, you know, no disrespect to page builders, I don't know, what, who, who are the sponsors? Uh, yeah, yeah bold, grid, bold, bold Grid is, is awesome. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, you know, that, that, that's another potential, okay. Um, you know, changes for software developers, right, it's, it's React, um, and it's, you know, it's very JavaScript oriented. Um, I think theme development, for Gutenberg, uh, you know, using and taking advantage of Gutenberg and Gutenberg blocks is going to change. Um, the paradigm is, again, going to be block-centric. Um, and I'm excited to see how uh, people kind of develop those workflows and those processes because that's going internally right now um, at my company. Um, you know, I don't want to focus on the controversy. And the reason I don't want to focus on it is not to dismiss, like, completely valid criticisms. We don't think it's perfect by any stretch, and there's miles to go, I think, before it's, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's mature, certainly. Um, I just, I, I want to focus on the opportunities, um, because I'm an entrepreneur, right? So um, I want to I kind of stick more to that stuff, um, you know. So, you know, I, I, I want, uh, and, and I think, you know, okay, I think that, that in WordPress, um, if you look at the ecosystem, it's uh, been a fairly stable ecosystem, right? Um, there, you know, tons of waves are not made, and a lot of that is purposeful. Um, but if you look at what's, what's happening with Gutenberg and the new editor, um, and by the way, eventually we're not even gonna be talking about Gutenberg, it's just gonna be the editor. Um, I see it as the biggest disruption in, in the WordPress ecosystem in quite a long time, maybe custom post types, um, maybe more, uh, maybe bigger than that. Um, and so as an entrepreneur, um, as somebody that's interested in continuing to grow and scale my company, um, I see disruptions in this ecosystem that we've been a part of for the last you know, three, almost four years. And um, I get really excited. I get really, really excited because these are the sorts of opportunities that allow smaller, possibly more flexible agencies like us uh, to start offering you know, different kinds of products and services um, that uh, maybe other companies can't or won't. Um, so it creates, it creates disruption and it creates opportunities. And, and yes, there is controversy, and yes, there are completely valid criticisms, and you know, again, we can go on and on about that, but um, I like it when people get mad. Uh, I just see that there's an opportunity. So um, let's brainstorm. Um, I've talked a little bit about some of the things that I see, uh, possibly for agencies, but um, I want to ask you guys to sort of contribute and, and think where you guys are. Let, let's say if you're freelancers or you maintain a lot of sites or, you know, what, kind of whatever your role or position is in the ecosystem, what are some, what are some opportunities, business opportunities with this, this disruption? Yes? We've been saying we should put some pages on our service around uh, fixing if someone tries to convert to Uber. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so I think there, there are going to be issues, right, uh, for lots of sites. 
and I think there's definitely going to be opportunities there. So um, I think everyone's scared of is, especially agencies with a bunch of sites, is if clients log in when it's available and yeah. apply it, and then all of a sudden we get the phone ringing off of Right. But, but, but I guess my, my whole thing with that is, right, so, for, you know, if you're maintaining sites, right, as a, someone that's maintaining sites, uh, you know, you have the responsibility of preparing for these kinds of things, right? It's just, it's just part of what you do. I think a lot of times people look at maintaining sites and the business of maintaining sites as free money, like, you know, update core, update plugins, and just the money rolls in. And so, yeah, no, so you actually have to work, right? You have to plan for, you know, major upgrades and how things are going to change, you know, and you have to price accordingly. So, you know, people are worried about the, I, I, I think that's hilarious to me, people are worried about the phone ringing off the hook. That's awesome. <laughs> You know, uh, it's, and you know, if, if you're if you're billing by the hour, that's even more awesome. Um, but um, but yeah, certainly there are going to be great opportunities in helping people transition if their site has uh, potential issues with the upgrade for sure. Yes. So uh, one of I think probably the obvious answer would be uh, premium blocks, right? Companies coming out with really advanced uh, Gutenberg blocks and, and more to that a a grouping those blocks into a certain niche, right? So maybe it's copywriting, or maybe it's design, or maybe it's e-commerce. Huge opportunity there. Um, and then from our perspective, related, uh, I have a plugin business, but preparing our plugin to be Gutenberg ready um, is a huge opportunity for anybody with any any plugin product out there. Uh, because it's when Gutenberg hits and your plugin is ready, you have some marketing fodder immediately. Right? And, and if your competitors don't have it or they're not ready, it's a really good opportunity to rise above it. Yeah, no, ab yeah, absolutely. And I think with, 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 the, with the premium blocks, I mean, you, again, I, I just showed you, and, that, and that's really the tip of the iceberg. Actually, those blocks aren't, you know, that sophisticated. I mean, for us, we, we do a lot of React stuff. We do a lot of business solution application mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, I think that took one of our developers, the pie chart block, it took one of our developers a day, more or less, to do most of the work. And, and that day was also, what is Gutenberg? How the hell does this thing work, et cetera? <laughs> so, so, you know, uh, these aren't actually tremendous, like what I've shown you is actually not all that sophisticated. So I'm, I'm really excited to see how far you can take it. And um, I think, yeah, there, there's no doubt there's tremendous opportunities in that, yes. I think there's also a great opportunity with uh, Gutenberg to help people build best practice content around web accessibility and search optimization, both data visualization especially. Uh, the correct solution that most people go to is you take your wonderful visualized data, make a PNG file and pop it onto your page, exactly. and then give some alt text saying, here's a pie chart. <laughs> um, yeah. so, like the pie chart example where on the back end you've got all the data points, it's just, it's not that <coughs> stretch to code that Gutenberg block with accessibility controls in it so that somebody that's approaching it with a screen reader has the opportunity to go to that Google Sheet and look at the data in a way, digest the data in a way that makes sense for them. I think that's an awesome point. I mean, I, that, and it's not really something I've thought a ton about, but I think it's an awesome point, it, especially in light of the sort of, there's this kind of accessibility controversy around Gutenberg, at which I think is, there are many, many valid points there. Uh, there's many valid points. I'm not trying to dismiss that at all, um, but in that use case, right, the yep. possibility is there, yes. right? Uh, and I, I, you know, I have a cousin who's uh, blind, mm -hmm. so I, I've seen how he uses like the internet and and yeah you know that's it, it definitely makes you sensitive to the fact that yeah if you're yeah exactly you're putting a, a PNG that says pie chart okay well what good does that serve you know my cousin for example so so I think yeah no certainly in that use case it's a it's a great great example um, of, of being able to have the ability to get, empower users to have a more accessible web mm -hmm. and create more accessible content for sure Yes? Uh, I think for theme development around Gutenberg blocks, there's some opportunity to streamline uh, performance and client needs. If you look at what's available on Gleamforest for premium themes, as an example, you get a lot of overbuilt, everything under the sun, 
uh, options, and uh, they can, you know, you might only need one or two features of that premium theme. It seems to me like Gutenberg is more has a more modular uh, kind of idea behind it. So I think themes that can be built in a way that allow for puzzle pieces to kind of more seamlessly integrate without impacting the site performance. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I agree. One, one of the things that you know I think about a lot is um, uh, you know with with uh, with page builders, right? It, it gives it, one of the one of the, so you know people, and especially in, in WordPress development, you know, complain about page builders a lot, right? And one of the things that's interesting to me is I completely understand why they exist, right? They exist for a reason. Uh, end users sort of demanded a better experience building pages then WordPress kind of offers them out of the gate. And, um, and, and you know, one of, the, one of the things I know, a lot of agencies that use page builders and, you know, they create these like, custom elements, right, that are branded, styled consistently, right, and, so, and reusable. And I think that that paradigm, I get it. It makes sense, right? Um, so you want to empower content managers to stay within branding guidelines, right? Um, so I think that the... the Again, I don't know if it's there yet, but the possibilities are there, um, for sure. Yeah. Uh, another thing, another subject of Gutenberg that <clears throat> I think doesn't get enough conversation uh, lately with all the, some of the drama going around, um, which is valid, is that the editor is first. And Gutenberg, the, the, a long-term vision is to have me, a non-developer uh, and a non-designer, be able to use blocks to create an entire website from scratch. So what's going to happen to themes? Are themes going to still be uh, a necessary part, or are themes going to be Gutenberg and, uh, and be ready? Will we start with a blank canvas? And I'm, I'm excited for that. Well, and so, so I mean, I, I don't know if you guys saw or know about this, but the, so WP Engine recently acquired Array Themes. Uh, do you guys know Array Themes? And Array Themes actually, uh, they they created this a product called Atomic Blocks. They were one of the first. Um, they were one of the first collection of blocks. Um, I think it came out in April or around there. They were really really smart. Those guys. They made um, they made a New, a Gutenberg news site, right, where they aggregated all the sort of Gutenberg stuff and then, um, and then came out with their product that, you know, they featured on the Gutenberg news site and, um, and you know, their blocks are really, they're, they're really kind of design forward and, and pr pr primarily presentation blocks. And uh, yeah, so WP Engine acquired Array Themes, Atomic Blocks, and Gutenberg News. Um, and you know, uh, you see a lot of these hosting companies that they're they're starting to think about what, how they're going to approach this, and what are their what are the solutions that they're going to be offering their their clients. Um, so you know, I've definitely looked at that and thought, you know, to myself, there there's tremendous tremendous opportunity um, in some of these bigger companies taking making bets and how. You know, because at the end of the day, <coughs> who's WordPress for, right? Um, at the end of the day, who's WordPress for? Uh, end users, right? And so, so as long as we get to a place where the end user experience is better and people are more empowered, as far as I'm concerned, that's all I care about. And if, um, you know, if there are, sort of entrepreneurial opportunities to create those better user experiences, easier and, you know, sort of empowering user experiences, then I'm all about that. Um, and frankly, we don't, as an agency, we don't need to do WordPress work anymore. Um, but I, there's something about this ecosystem uh, where I think it's an enormous ecosystem with an enormous user base and, um, you know, there, there's, there are tremendous, tremendous opportunities in there. Um, and, and again, disruption, uh, disruption to me is, uh, is, is awesome for, for an entrepreneur. And I just, if, you know, if you take anything away from this talk, it's, it's just 
it's fine to be sort of outraged. It's fine to have like you know criticisms. It's fine to be skeptical. All those things are great. Um, but if you're an entrepreneur, be entrepreneurial. You know, turn that around. You know, what 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 are you know even even kind of coming from the other side, right? Like you see like uh, the you know classic press fork, right? There's nothing nothing wrong with a fork. That probably wouldn't have existed if this project wouldn't have gone the way it did, right? So there's always, there's always opportunities out there. Um, so uh, I'll open it up for questions. Uh, here's some links to three of the blocks I demoed. They're free. Um, so if you want to um, download them, uh, play them, play around with them, they're all on GitHub. Um, and uh, if there's a problem or an issue, please put in a pull request. Um, or send me an email. I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, so anyway, and there's my information. Um, that's a link to um, the slides, but you probably don't need the slides. There's not a ton there. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's it. Any questions, uh, thoughts, ideas? Yes? Um, I have a question because I'm new to Google, but mm -hmm. just learning and trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Like, are you talking about like, are you talking about custom like block development? Yeah, it it I mean it depends what your training is. You know, that's the, I, you shouldn't find that to be a problem. It's it's pretty it's pretty straightforward. I mean, this whole blocks concept is is kind of taking over. Where I work, we use SharePoint on we're migrating an internet our internet to SharePoint online. Exact same concept. Find the page up how you want it, divide it up. You drop a block that does a specific thing, the different parts of the page you want, and you configure the options if the page is done. I think I think there is there is a learning curve from from the standpoint of like, you know, you, there is a certain way that people are accustomed to working with a classic editor that, you know, you're going to have to learn new sort of workflows, and there's there's something there. If you're talking about like if you're talking about custom block development, um, you're going to have to be really, really comfortable with JavaScript, React, um, and there's, so there's a lot of stuff there. But if you're ta just talking about like trying to build rich content in posts, it should be, you know, it should be something where just try it out, experiment, figure it out. Um, I don't think it's that bad. I'm biased. I've been using it for quite a while now, and so I've started to kind of, a lot of the things, a lot of the sort of quirks of it are, are you know, sort of automatic at this stage, but uh, no pun intended. Yes? Uh, what you might want to do for that process, which um, uh, I've been doing and a few other people that I know is, whatever your host is, if they provide a staging site opportunity, you make a copy of, of those client sites you have on the live site, install and activate the classic editor plugin. So when Gutenberg drops, they're not going to be affected. It'll just be business as usual. But if you create a copy on the staging uh, site and then start playing around with those copies of those sites, your, that your learning curve is going to be um, shortened by quite a bit. And then when Gutenberg is ready and you're ready, then you can just activate Gutenberg on those, on those other sites. Yeah. Don't be, create your sandbox and don't be afraid. It's all good. Yes. It just seems like uh, Gutenberg's just a lot quicker way to build pages mm -hmm. than the classic editor was. Classic editor was very static. Um, you know, this is very fluid. I think people are going to find you, you're going to be building pages much more quickly and much more interesting looking pages that much quicker. That's my impression of Gutenberg. And I, I mean, classic editor as a page builder is awful. And that's why page builders exist, <laughs> right? Yeah. Right, so so I mean, I mean, you know, I think to me, like you know, where there's a lot of debate about what you know is, is Gutenberg better than the classic editor is in creating like post content, you know. But again, like again, I think what people don't, they're not seeing the possibilities, 
It's like, you know, it's like when you're in a small, you know, you're, you're in this sort of paradigm of WordPress and the classic editor. You just kind of start constraining what you think you can do, right? Um, and, and also, to be fair, like, I, I just haven't seen a lot of blocks out there. People are waiting or whatever it is. I haven't seen a lot of blocks out there that push it and challenge, you know, challenge sort of the, the limits and, 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 you know, are, are creative and, and, and introduce like more advanced functionalities and have more dynamic sort of outcomes. You know, if, maybe part of it for me is that, you know, we, we my company, we, we built a lot of just business solution stuff where we're having to make it up. And, and you know, the, the constraint is, Time and budget, right? Uh, <laughs> so, now, just by your demos, you've obviously done quite a bit of work with it already. Yeah, yeah. This is like this. Honestly, this is our company fun side project for the last like nine. Months. Yeah, something like that. Nine months, something like that. Yes. Um, how do you roll it out to a live site and see any sort of ramifications from like a technical SEO perspective on HD or technical SEO? Well, yeah. So, so yeah, it's on our block party site, um, and uh, we built a bunch of custom blocks there. There's a block that I didn't show. There's an accordion. I think it's the FAQ and stuff like that. Um, from a performance standpoint, it really is going to depend on what your like what page, what what's the content, what you're going to do with it. Um, the fact that it's just a lot of HTML, more you know, it's it's bloated. It. That's a, oh yeah, I'm happy to talk to you about that afterwards. No, no, no. It, yeah, yeah. No, I, I know what you're saying. Um, I think there are advantages and disadvantages, but um, uh, yeah, I, I go into it more detail well, I afterwards. Developers that are very, very, uh, that are like, November 16th, we're not going to roll it out. We're just going to Yeah. And that's, I mean, and that's cool. That, that means for some businesses, well, no, that's I, just. But I have a marketing team that if, I think they want to know the whole picture. And, and yeah. I think, so, like, what I would tell your, your guys, your developers, are, is just, uh, I mean, that might be the right sort of strategy for right now, yeah. mm -hmm. but you're just delay. Yeah, it's just like, you know, it's like at some point, and, and you know, honestly, from, from my standpoint, the, the great, the tremendous, like, talented software developers that I've met, mm -hmm. they're excited by new tech and new challenges and, new, you know, so... You know, this whole like fear thing is is uh, it's it's a little bit weird for me in tech because yeah. um, we you know I don't know like again we're we're a generalist shop and we're in New Mexico so <laughs> we we end up doing stuff like building like wearable applications and random things you know like and in tech we don't we don't have a ton of experience in but it's just like okay hey we're developers we'll figure it out. Uh, so, so I don't know. Maybe that's more like our sort of paradigm and what we what we do. A anybody else? Like I said. Uh, oh wait, did anyone text me? Oh, no one texted me. Okay. Um, yeah. If you if you have questions, feel free to email me, uh, text me, or whatever, or to come talk to me afterwards. I appreciate your guys' attention and time. Thanks.